Mr. Majid Al Ansari, advisor to the Prime Minister of Qatar and the spokesperson of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Thank you for granting us this interview. We are now in Passover times, which is centered on the concept of freedom. After more than 200 days in captivity, thus Qatar makes every effort in order to reach an agreement for the release of the hostages. Well, since 2006, Qatar has played a pivotal role after it was asked by the United States to establish a channel of communication with uh, Hamas in de-escalation and uh, mediation between uh, both sides. We have done so uh, countless times since 2006 and especially post-2014, and we have succeeded to avert major conflicts and major escalations uh, between both sides and to de-escalate at so many times, including uh, and up to the 28th of September of uh, this year when uh, mediation uh, succeeded in reaching a deal between uh, both sides. And obviously, while the parameters have shifted post the attacks of the 7th of, uh, of October, we have immediately resumed our uh, role uh, on the 8th of October, reaching out to uh, both sides and insisting that uh, we start immediately with mediation, especially since we uh, got the information that there are civilian lives at uh, stake and lives at stake of the hostages and, of course, furthermore now with the current uh, conflict. Uh, our negotiating teams have been working day and night, 24-7, since more than six months now. The only time off they had is when the talks uh, collapsed. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and therefore, I think we have done all possible in this because we had at the foremost in our uh, priority list the lives of uh, civilians that are going to be harmed in, in this. Every day that the delay in reaching uh, a deal, more lives are uh, lost and the lives of the hostages are put at further uh, risk. And therefore, we understand and we share the burden of uh, the lives of these uh, people on our uh, shoulders and uh, we take it seriously. And from the top levels of uh, leadership, uh, we have invested time and effort in, uh, in this and uh, the peace and security in, in the region is a concern not only for us, but for all peace-loving people in this uh, region. And we can never have peace and security for all of us in, uh, in the region, for the Qatari people and the people uh, in Israel and in, in Palestine and the rest of uh, the region, unless we have venues for peace, which this mediation that uh, we are leading is, of course, uh, paramount to right. Is Israel making every effort to fulfill its obligations? I mean, we have voiced our uh, frustration uh, with the, the commitment level of both sides. Uh, we are reassessing our role as uh, mediators as a result of uh, our uh, feelings towards the uh, seriousness of both sides in reaching uh, a deal. We believe that a lot more can be done from both sides and that we are doing all that we can right now and we need more pressure on both sides in order to reach a deal. You're saying both sides, but the head of the CIA and Secretary Blinken uh, accused Hamas and blaming them for this situation right now, for the absence of the ceasefire. And there appears to be a lot of uh, compromise made by the Israeli side in order to reach a deal. Can you relate to that? Let me tell you what I can tell you about the negotiation process itself and where it is at right now. Where it is at right now is that we are in need of more show of commitment from both sides and more Which concessions side? from both sides, not only from the Israeli side or uh, from Hamas' side. I think there are a lot of hard decisions to be making. Any mediation undertaken, especially under parameters like the ones we are uh, living through uh, right now, will be difficult negotiations, will be difficult concessions from both sides. And every day there's a delay, further risk is to civilians from uh, both sides. And I hope that those taking decisions on both sides will understand that every day they spend not reaching a deal means further risk to the hostages and further risk to civilians in Gaza. Do you believe Netanyahu is not understanding this statement? I won't comment on individuals on, uh, on this because I think this is bigger than uh, individuals. But what I can tell you is that there is a lot of political posturing. There is a lot of very narrow political calculations that are impeding the negotiation process, impeding from the, the Israeli side. Again, from both sides. And we have taken uh, very clear positions on this and we sh showed very clear statements on this because we believe that this is not the time for political calculation. This is not the time for political posturing. This is not the time to put your own personal political future ahead of the lives of the hostages and the civilians in, uh, in Gaza. With the terrible situation, humanitarian situation we have right now, we hope that all those involved, just like the officials here in, in Qatar, would have only one thing on the top of their mind, which is a humanitarian loss and a humanitarian cause within ending this conflict. If Israel will operate in Rafah, how this might affect the negotiations? Obviously, every escalation that takes place uh, on the ground has its bearing on the negotiation process. And we have said that 10% uh, of the land in, uh, in Gaza houses now more than 1.7 million 
people. No military operation can be a safe operation that would protect the lives of civilians within these kind of uh, parameters. The humanitarian situation in Rafah is already dire. We are talking about six, we are six weeks away from famine in Gaza. People are dying needlessly because of lack of access to water, lack of access to sanitation, lack of access to medical uh, services. Children are dying in their incubators and, and kids and women are, are dying just because they don't have access to, clear, uh, to clean uh, water and to uh, sanitation. And therefore, talking about an attack on Rafah in these parameters would mean a grave humanitarian disaster like none other before. And obviously, it will have its uh, effect on the negotiation. But again, we are also talking here about the security and the safety of the hostages. Every escalation on uh, the ground puts hostages at further risk, and we need to give the priority right now to getting the hostages back to their families and protecting civilians. Some Israelis will say Qatar has the leadership of Hamas, the terror organization who is responsible for the most horrific attack on Jews since the Holocaust. The easy decision would have been to simply raise our hands and say nothing can be done about this and leave it as it is. And this is, I would have uh, believed that uh, the, mo the biggest mistake would have been not to have a mediation process post the 7th of October. We are having uh, the most difficult discussions over ending this conflict, over getting the hostages back home. But the alternative to this would be not having these discussions at all, not having any chance of the hostages returning to their families or protecting the lives of the civilians in, uh, in Gaza. Having this role as mediator requires a lot of actions from our side as mediators. We have never been passive mediators. When we were asked by the United States to open this channel of communication with uh, Hamas, of course there was a calculated risk mm -hmm. that Qatar would have to take in a lot of heat as a result of uh, playing that uh, role of hosting uh, Hamas here in, uh, in Doha. But that is what enabled us to hold all of these mediations that took place all throughout uh, the years since 2006 to, uh, to today. And right now, the only reason we have this office here in, uh, in Doha is for the mediation process itself that is undergoing right now. So we feel surprised that those who are benefiting from the process itself and benefiting from the mediation itself right now and are engaged in that uh, negotiation would criticize Qatar for hosting uh, the political office here in, in Doha when it is the only venue for holding that mediation. You've been active also regarding the transferring of aid, of money towards Gaza. What is your answer to those who say Qatar transferred hundreds of millions of dollars to uh, Gaza, and by that Hamas have enough money in order to facilitate terror? Let me be very clear on the aid that was delivered to Gaza. First of all, as I said, we were never passive mediators. In every mediation that succeeded, that Qatar participated in, we paid into peace uh, and stability. If you look at uh, uh, the negotiations between Which is Japan, something that didn't happen. There is no peace and no stability. While we were doing all these countless mediations between uh, Hamas and, uh, and Israel, we also committed to the reconstruction in Gaza because providing the people with hope, providing the people for, uh, with a chance to live naturally and for prosperity is the only way to get out of the cycle of violence. And uh, we have been able to avert war so many times as a result of having such aid. But let me tell you very clearly, all of that aid was part of a mechanism that included complete Israeli oversight, mm -hmm. complete Israeli vetting, even of the families that received the $100 a month uh, aid uh, through the, this uh, process. That was done under the oversight of uh, the Israelis with complete vetting from the Israeli side. And we are uh, appalled by the fact that some of the officials who actually worked on the process itself and at some times came to Doha and demanded that Qatar increase its aid to, uh, to Gaza or continue its aid to Gaza when Qatar was reconsidering, that these same officials would go out and accuse Qatar of sending that money to Hamas. This money, the checkpoints were there, they were established by the uh, Israeli government. The money actually went physically to Israel. The money that uh, went there for buying the, the fuel was actually sent through Israel. The fuel was bought in, in Israel and then moved to Gaza in a secure manner and immediately plugged in to, uh, to the grid. The aid that went in also went in with oversight from international organizations, and there was a clear vetting process for all the families, and there was a clear reporting back uh, mechanism to, uh, to the Israeli uh, agencies. And therefore, there were the checkpoints and the, and the guarantees in place to make sure that none of that money has went anywhere else. This was done for humanitarian reasons, and the, the, the lack of peace and security that we have here today is not a result of sending aid to the people of Gaza. It's a result of the lack of commitment to peace from both sides.
I want to show you a statement of uh, one of the parliament members um, just days ago saying very harsh comments regarding Jews and regarding Israel. لن يكون هناك سلام ولا تفاوض مع الكيان الصهيوني لسبب واحد فقط لأن عقيدتهم أصلا لا تعترف بالتفاوض بل بالمراوقة ونقض ونقض العهود والكذب وها هي المبادرة العربية مضى عليها الآن أكثر من 22 عاما ولم يعترفوا بها فقط يعترفون بشيء واحد وهو القتل فهم قتلة الأنبياء and I wonder, does this represent the Qatari public nowadays? Let me be very clear on, uh, on this. The individual in uh, question is an elected member of the Shura Council here in uh, Qatar. His views obviously do not represent the views of the government of uh, Qatar. Our views, especially regarding hatred, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, and all forms of uh, racism and uh, hatred have been very clear throughout uh, the years. You know, Qatar is a multicultural society. You've been here in, in Qatar. Anybody who visits Qatar will understand that people of different faiths, backgrounds, uh, national backgrounds, or racial uh, backgrounds will be over the place here in, uh, in Qatar. So this multiculturalism is something that we celebrate, something that we believe in. There is a multitude of ways that we have shown this through the interfaith dialogues, through our hosting of the uh, World uh, Cup, and we believe in this. It is part of our uh, identity, and I believe that uh, the Qatari government positions have been very clear. You can read it in all of our statements and all of our positions all throughout, throughout uh, the years, including our commitment to fighting hatred, uh, with uh, working with international agencies, and uh, all the initiatives that have taken place uh, for, throughout uh, the years. So our positions on this are very uh, clear, and I would ask those who are looking for Qatari positions to look for the official uh, statements on uh, this that can be found very easily on the, uh, either on our uh, websites or, or, on, here. Uh, or here in Doha. Another obstacle regarding the relations between Israel and Qatar was uh, the prohibiting of Al Jazeera. How do you prospect this act from the Israeli government? Al Jazeera is an independent uh, media outlet, and I'm sure as a journalist you uh, value very highly your uh, independence. Uh, we Israel tend to see it as a, a station that glorifies terror. Again, uh, I can't speak here on behalf of an independent media outlet. I would encourage, of course, uh, direct engagement with uh, Al Jazeera itself. I would love to see an interview between you and uh, somebody from either. Al Jazeera to uh, speak about this. But our positions on this very clear. We respect media freedom, and we uh, hope that all the governments in the world would allow uh, journalists such as yourself the freedom to act without uh, any censorship. Uh, to conclude, I wonder if you have a message to the Israeli public. You came forward with an unusual step to talk with us, an Israeli uh, broadcast channel. And I wonder if you have something to address the Israeli public. You know, in Qatar, this is a, a peace-loving country with a peace-loving people. So our history has shown throughout uh, you know, the years how we have always believed in the cause for peace. We have always believed in dialogue, and we have always believed in uh, being there for our friends and uh, partners when need uh, be. I think a lot of the uh, misinformation and disinformation about Qatar has to do with ignorance and has to do with a lack of understanding of who we are and what we do. And uh, through engagement, we hope to change that. Dr. Marjad al thank you for this interview. And I hope to see you soon in Tel Aviv or in Doha. Thank you very much.